everyone, so today's video is going to be a tortoise video and it's going to be five common mistakes that tortoise owners make. I may even throw in a sixth because it's quite difficult to narrow it down. There's a lot of misconceptions around tortoises. So please don't think that I'm coming at you saying that I'm an expert. I'm still learning. I only have one tortoise, Sheldon, who I've had for around seven or eight years now. So I have learned a lot and I've done a lot of research. So I hope to share a little bit of that with you so that if you're new to tortoises, maybe you don't make some of these mistakes. So the first mistake that I've put down is impulse buying. So this is a mistake that I've made with animals in the past and tortoises obviously are one of the longest living animals. There's a tortoise, Jonathan, which according to Wikipedia is currently the oldest known living tortoise and he's around 187 or 188. However, he isn't actually the oldest tortoise ever recorded. One tortoise from India, Adwaita, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, is said to have lived 255 years. So this is an extreme example, but depending on the species, in captivity, tortoises can live anywhere from 50 to 100 years. So it's so important to meet their basic needs. Don't just take the advice of one pet store or breeder. There are so many amazing resources available online now, so have a look around. I particularly like the Tortoise Trust website, the Tortoise Table, HermanTortoise.co.uk is useful, especially when it comes to hibernation information. There's so much out there, and I'm not saying that all pet shops and breeders don't know what they're doing. There's a lot of, especially really good breeders out there now, but please do do your own research as well, just to check that you're meeting all of their needs. So also remember that tortoises could set you back a lot. So not even just the cost of the tortoise, although they are one of the more expensive animals, especially here in the UK, but there's also the cost of the setup, and if you're not DIYing it, it can cost you a lot of money to get an appropriate sized enclosure. There's also all the heating, the lighting, thermometers. There's so much, there's potential vet bills. So please do make sure that this is the right animal for you because you're looking at investing quite a lot of money in them for quite a long period of time. So one of the things I think is a common issue is people not knowing the species of the tortoise that they own. And I always think if you don't know what species you've got, how are you sure that you're taking care of it properly? Tortoises originate from loads of different areas of the world, different climates, they'll be eating different foods. Some are predominantly herbivores, some are omnivores. So if you don't know what species you've got, how do you know you're looking after it properly? Also, some of these species get absolutely huge. If you look at Silcartes, they get big, Galapagos. All these tortoises get absolutely huge. So you don't know if you're going to be having to invest in a heated shed later down the line to be able to provide appropriate accommodation for them. So do make sure that you're getting a suitable tortoise for your lifestyle. So carrying on from that line, I've put down inappropriate housing. So the size of the enclosure varies a lot depending on what source you read. I think the general accepted recommended minimum size for a small Mediterranean species is four foot by eight foot. For a hatchling, you're looking at between two foot by three foot, two foot by four foot, depending on which article you read, but that's for a hatchling, so you are going to have to increase that as they grow. Again, like I said, with silcartas, tortoises like that, it's going to have to be huge, but these are all minimums, and generally, the bigger you can provide, the better. So also vivariums are not appropriate for, as far as I'm aware, most species of tortoise, um, the humidity is just really difficult. You can't get that gradient between hot and cool area, which they really need. They need to be able to regulate their own body temperature. And with a vivarium, it keeps in all of that heat and the temperature seems to be one, one temperature. So generally a tortoise table is the best recommended enclosure for them. So you can DIY these so they don't have to be ridiculously expensive, but that's what you're looking at for a tortoise. So another common mistake is with a tortoise's diet. So there's a lot of these kind of canned food, these all-in-one tortoise diet pellets that you soak and they're generally not appropriate. They're too low in fiber, they're too high in protein, they're just generally not a good diet. So they are generally associated with lots of issues around unnatural growth, poor bone density. I would just completely avoid any of those diets and go for a fresh diet. So a tortoise diet needs to be low in protein, high in fibre, 
high in calcium, low in carbohydrates and low in fat. So again, take a look at the tortoise table website. It's got an amazing database of plants. You can type in a plant and it will tell you how often your tortoise can eat it. It's a really good resource available to tortoise keepers. So along with the diet is not providing your tortoise water. This is still something that people believe is that tortoises don't need water and they get it all from their plants that they eat. This is rubbish. In the wild, tortoises would drink and soak themselves in puddles. So they need to stay hydrated to prevent kidney issues, bladder stones. It's so important for them to stay hydrated. So along with providing a water dish that is big enough for them to soak themselves in and shallow enough that they won't drown, you also need to be soaking your tortoise two or three times a week in some warm, shallowish water. So the next thing is heating and lighting and you absolutely need to provide both heat and UV light. So they need this to digest their food, for bone development, for growth and to utilise the calcium that they consume. So without providing appropriate heating and lighting, you're looking at metabolic bone disease, you're looking at they won't be able to digest their food so it will sit in their gut and it can actually rot and produce gases and can cause a lot of complications. So you do really need to look at basking temperatures. Like I mentioned before, you need a hot area and a cool area so they can go between the two to regulate their temperature. So the last thing I've put in here is substrates. So I'm not going to go into this too much as I do have a whole substrate video, but just look into substrates. Providing things like paper towels, newspaper is not appropriate because tortoises actually dig down to regulate their temperature and their fluid loss and obviously they're not able to do that in newspaper. Things like hay is not appropriate. Most commercial sort of tortoise substrates aren't appropriate. The thing that I recommend is topsoil, just topsoil. But like I say, I've got a whole video on that, so I'm not gonna go into it too much. So I hope you enjoyed my video on tortoise common mistakes. So please don't feel like I'm attacking anyone. I'm always learning something new. And I think as long as we're prepared to research and adapt our practice and do the best we can for our pets, then that's the best thing that we can do. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you soon. Bye.